When does the Bible day begin? Certainly not at midnight, such as the Roman calendar shows. No one would say that. We are told today that the day begins on the Hebrew calendar, and I say that with parentheses because there ain't nothing Hebrew about that calendar. <laughs> that the day begins when the sun sets by the moon, measured essentially. That is a lunar calendar, and history tells us that comes from Babylon, not the Bible, as do their months such as Tammuz. You know, the false god rebuked in scripture? What, we, we think Yahuwah named one of his months after that guy? Don't think so. The Book of Jubilees makes a very strong statement that leads us to the day start at sunrise, measured by the sun, not the moon. After also telling us day and night were two of the creations on the first day, which is far more than evening and morning, which only equal night in Hebrew, ignoring he created during the daytime which Genesis is very clear he did. Yahuwah created light and named it day or daylight, the daytime. Anyone claiming the 24-hour day somehow did not include the daytime is illiterate. Anyone claiming that somehow that 24-hour day is evening and morning does not know Hebrew as the word morning there is most certainly only the dark hours before sunrise in Hebrew, the original language, that is. Thus, it is only identifying 12 of the 24 hours and not the full day, which is also defined in the passage as a day 24 hours. This is why Jubilees warrants to follow the moon leads to error in the biblical calendar. Anyone doing so is disrupting the Bible calendar as the moon comes in 10 days too soon on the year. Every month is wrong. Every season is wrong. 22 of 52 Sabbaths or weeks are disrupted. The feasts would all be off and even the day is off 12 hours, 50% from when it should be begin. So what is the measure? Jubilees 2 tells us, On the fourth day Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days, for Sabbaths, weeks, for months, Feasts, and yes, even the two feasts of seven. Note, that means five do not begin at sunset with the moon. Yet, you can't even get to those dates without the sun, or you would be wrong in counting. For years... Sabbaths of years or counting of seven-year periods. Jubilees or 49-year periods. Yes, the 50th year is the celebration, but the counting is 49 years. And all seasons of years, the sun is the measure for all these, not the moon even according to the farmer's almanac. It has its purpose, the moon does, but this ain't it. Even the prophet Enoch agrees with this. And I saw the chambers of the sun and the moon, where they go out and where they return, and their glorious return, and how one is more honored than the other is and their magnificent course, and how they do not leave their course, neither adding nor subtracting from their course, still today, and how they keep faith in one another, observing their oath. And the sun goes out 
first and completes its journey at the command of the Lord of Spirits, and his name endures forever and ever, however, more importantly. Does Torah and the rest of the modern Bible canon agree with Jubilees, or does it set forth a lunar calendar? Well, one can only attempt to forget that Yahuwah created the day first, and he did say, during the day. And then they claim the creation day is only evening and morning, which is actually only 12 hours of the Hebrew day, and a selective reading ignoring the daytime creation period Yahuwah named first, right there on day one, as that is when creation began, during the day at sunrise. Then, on day four, he created the sun during what period? During the daytime. And then the moon and the stars when at night. Day comes first in the creation account, indisputably, and not something anyone can actually debate. And Yahuwah defined the start of the day and please produce one's credentials that then they can redefine his definition. The darkness prior to the beginning of the day was created is merely the absence of light, not evil, and not even named night nor is it one of the 22 creations identified in Jubilees. We are not to follow Kabbalah, which is the origin of an argument, for that darkness prior having some other purpose, representing perhaps evil, never found in Scripture, but leaven of the Pharisees. For it is the two evening feasts that are used in ignorance to attempt to change the day to sunset in beginning instead, because these start then. And they do, however. They aren't reading these accounts even. For instance, we cover in our Day of Atonement video, watch it in Answers on Sabbath. Leviticus 16 defines the time period for this day, as well as Leviticus 23. It is one 24-hour day that does indeed begin in the evening. It is not two days, but it has to be to fit the fraud calendar. As atonement and cleansing are typically evening elements in Scripture, it does begin in the evening of the ninth not the tenth, of the seventh month, and most miss that, and then goes 24 hours from evening to evening. That calendar is obvious. It says ending on the tenth at sundown. This firmly proves the Bible calendar day cannot start with the moon. You have two dates here in Leviticus, mind you, yet only 24 hours. The day must change in between. So how does that work? Only if the day begins at sunrise, not sunset. In our new book, Rest, The Case for Sabbath, over 400 pages thick, you will find a well-supported chapter on this topic with charts like we were, were going to show you here. We prove this out there, though, not in this recap. And understand the background is not an accurate representation, as the Greek Jesus, well, is not the dark-skinned Hebrew Yahusha. No. However, Yahusha was taken on Passover evening, according to Scripture. The next day, which begins at sunrise, he is tried and convicted and placed on the cross. Then he dies during the day, not night. The so-called conflicts in this story tell it, it all, as there are none but a brilliant preservation of Yah's calendar. See, the Pharisee Joseph of Arimathea, good man, but nevertheless a Pharisee, 
as well as the Pharisees themselves, were adamant to get him in the grave before their lunar Sabbath of the feast began. And he even bought linens because it was not the feast Sabbath for him yet, meaning he was on the Pharisee lunar calendar, while the Marys refused to anoint his body to work because they were still observing Sabbath, as theirs began at sunrise that morning. See, the Pharisee calendar, or modern Hebrew calendar, has a problem, as it does not fit this timing. And it has a sort of missing period to reconcile the wrong start at sunset with the moon erroneously. This is a sort of limbo period for them, yet they should be in Sabbath scripturally. They're wrong. They always were. And again, this is in the New Testament. So we know this was the first century practice. They were already using the wrong calendar. The Dead Sea Scrolls confirm they turned a blind eye to even the Torah calendar of Jubilees, specifically regarding times, at that time in the first century. The Pharisees wanted to avoid crucifying him on Passover, Scripture says. We cover this in detail. So, no, He was not that night, nor could be, and we know the disciples went and bought a Passover lamb to offer and eat, and they ate that evening, which is Passover, according to Scripture. So, most certainly, Messiah did have a Passover meal, maybe not a Pharisee Seder meal, which is ridiculously uh, impertinent anyway, and was then captured afterward later that evening evening. We also know he was crucified the next day, which began at sunrise, because the sun was out and darkened, which was a miracle, so it could not be at night. The sun doesn't come out at night. That's when he was crucified, according to scripture. The Marys would wait until sunrise to anoint his body when their Sabbath was over, as indicated again in the resurrection. He was literally officially dead from that time, exactly three days and three nights. As he said, he would be just as Jonah, right? All the Gospels are perfect on this and agree. One just needs to understand which perspective and which calendar is being employed in the passage. He then rises on the weekly Sabbath, which is Sunday morning only, on the Roman calendar, but it is still Saturday, the seventh day, the Sabbath on the Bible calendar, which is why the Bible says so, as it does not end until sunrise, and he rose before sunrise. That is clear. That is what the Gospels say, and all agree. If you are celebrating Easter Sunday, you have the wrong day. But this is because the church has lost the Bible calendar, along with the name of their God and even basic understanding of the word far too often. They don't even know nor relate the story of his birth with even remote accuracy to scripture, and that's really bad. That's why they celebrate the birth of the sun god, Mithra, on his birthday and rebirth day, and they call him Jesus. No, thank you. Those looking at Sunday, the tomb was already empty, so the Vatican cannot change the Sabbath. Sorry. And thus, the reason for the error in fraud. This is when Mary discovered he rose and tells Peter on what the Bible calls the first day, which is the next day after the sun had risen, and no longer Sabbath at that point. Yet it says he rose before the first day 
dawned on the seventh day. Firm proof, the day begins at sunrise. Peter and the apostles are later together. That same day, scripture calls it still the first day in the evening, because the day does not change at sunset, but sunrise. The reason Messiah was sacrificed on the 15th of Abib and not the Passover evening is not only because the Pharisees are recorded as not wanting that, but instead they wanted to do it in their limbo period between what they celebrate as Passover and unleavened bread in fraud, adding to the calendar to do so. Because he is not just the Passover lamb, but the lamb for all occasions of the covenant, just as the son of covenant, Isaac, was offered in sacrifice. On what day? On the 15th, not the 14th. He matches that and must the whole covenant, not just the Passover lamb, which has never been the indicator for his sacrifice. This counts out fully, which we cover in expelling the leaven from the seven days of unleavened bread. Yep, it's there because the Pharisees, modern rabbis, follow the wrong calendar based on the moon, not the sun. They have to add days. If you are thinking, now it's the loony solar calendar, right? Call it whatever you want. It starts with the moon period, on that calendar. Erroneously, and any so-called loony solar calendar for that matter, we have seen out there still disrupts exactly as Jubilees said it would, the days, the weeks, the Sabbaths, the months, the years, all of it. It does. And nobody has ever proven otherwise, nor will they, because the moon is the wrong measure. For unleavened bread is seven days, and not 7.5, and 7 is not 8. It just doesn't work. This is a problem for the lunar calendar, which requires really 8 days, or at least 7.5, depending on how you look at it, in order to fit, yet it cannot. These 7 days begin on the 14th in the evening. Why at night? Because that is Passover and unleavened bread both. Realize you do not eat leaven on Passover either. Thus, it's part of the same. And this is a time of not eating leaven or yeast, a rising agent whose gas bubbles cause bread to expand. Just as, and this is the symbology, Pharisee leaven causes the word to expand erroneously. If this seven days were on the lunar calendar, It would end on the 20th, yet the Bible says it goes evening to evening, from the 14th evening to the 21st evening. The very notion, evening has to be spelled out as different in this feast and in atonement, proves they are not the typical start of the day. This never works on the lunar calendar, which has two days for atonement instead of one, which is what it should be, according to scripture, only one, and essentially eight days instead of seven for unleavened bread. This is gross negligence for rabbis to peddle such ignorance and outright fraud. But this is not all. The Bible defines this over and over again. After the destruction of Sodom, Lot and his daughters thought mankind had been wiped out. The timeline is super clear here. The first daughter slept with her father yesternight, or yesterday night, or what we call last night. She is telling her sister this the next day during the daytime, called the morrow tomorrow, affirming last night she slept with her father. The younger daughter is then told this night, first meaning tonight, 
is the same day, you will do so as well. Yesterday was the evening and night. Today started at sunrise and continues through the night, thus defining the biblical day, which is always the same in Scripture. Moses warned Pharaoh, Tomorrow I will bring locusts. And lo, and behold, tomorrow came in the morning. That's what it says, as Yahuwah brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. Same day. And it when it was morning, oh, wait, that's tomorrow, the next day. The new day starts, the east wind brings the locusts on tomorrow which is a day change at sunrise, not sunset, which is never biblical. The Passover has always been the same timeline as we covered with Messiah. The Passover lamb was to be eaten that night in the evening and before sunrise. None was to remain until morning. Why? Morning is tomorrow, the next day, because the day starts at sunrise. That's why. It is to be eaten the same day it is offered, yet the morning is a different day, see? None left for the morning. Sunrise is a new day. Yes, this passage goes further specifying sunrise is tomorrow. The day changes at sunrise. Again, same day, eat it, but leave none for when. We know the morning, sunrise. You burn whatever is left over with fire then. But here we see sunrise is called tomorrow, and morning all the same, because tomorrow begins in the morning. For we know Passover was an evening event. They ate lamb, spread blood on their doorposts that evening. Then at midnight, the angel of death killed the firstborn of Egypt that did not have the blood. Pharaoh called them that night and let Israel go. So Israel prepared to go all the rest of that night until morning. They departed Ramses the Fertile Crescent on the morrow, tomorrow, after Passover. Hmm, the next day, because the day begins at sunrise, and even the date changed here from the 14th to the 15th, and it did so at sunrise. Even when Israel entered the Promised Land, the same timeline applied. They observed Passover the 14th in the evening only, and this only an evening event. Of course, this is also the beginning of unleavened bread, which starts at the same time as Passover and includes it. The manna tells this story very well, which we cover all of this in our Sabbath series, Part 6a through G, along with a chapter in Rest, the case for Sabbath. Get it. It's free, restsabbath.org. As it begins at sunrise, never sunset. They ate the old corn instead of manna, that next day, because it was a feast, Sabbath, and no manna. They ate it all that day, because sunrise begins the day after the Passover, just as it always does throughout all of Scripture. Then tomorrow, the next day, which just began at sunrise, that's when the manna always came, right at sunrise. And they had to gather before the sun waxed too hot. The manna ceased that morning, which is the next day, tomorrow. That's what it says. The day just began again at sunrise, never at sunset in Scripture. 
Finally, in this recap, and this is a brief compared to the seven videos in the Sabbath uh, series, as well as uh, our atonement video and the one on unleavened bread. So, all in all, it's nine. Uh, we have the story in Judges of the Levite Traveler. The story explicitly sets forth the fourth day beginning at sunrise, he rose ate lunch and dinner as the day progresses at the house, and then he lodged there evening and all night, all still the fourth day. The day begins at sunrise. He rose in the morning early, and it is tomorrow, specifically called the fifth day, no longer the fourth. He tarries afternoon and ate lunch again. The day becomes evening. Ding, 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 ding. The day becomes evening. That's what it says, because it is the same day. And he tarried all night. The day grew to an end, it says. And he is told, tomorrow, get you early on your way. That would be the sixth day, and it will begin when? At sunrise, tomorrow. The Bible has never left this to chance, certainly not to Pharisee leaven. When we test it, it agrees with Jubilees and Enoch and the Dead Sea Scrolls. The day begins at sunrise, never sunset in the whole of Scripture, period. Not in creation, as he created day during the day first, and separated from night. That dynamic is already set. From the first day, how can we ignore it? He created every day during the day, and then it was evening and morning, and recaps the first day, or the second day, and so on. You have to add these together to equal what is defined by the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day, as specifically 24 days. Hours. Yes, Messiah even told us there are 12 hours in the daytime, thus 24 in the day and night full day. And we even present a chart of Bible hours where we've charted many occurrences, even a parable of the farmer uh, that progresses through the entire daylight. And you can see that there are 12 hours. In rest, the case for Sabbath. We cover that in detail. Also, watch our Sabbath series, Part 6a through G, as well as our uh, answers on Sabbath. The first two videos deal with this as well. Check it out. The book is free in ebook, or you can purchase in print at restsabbath.org. 432 pages, and what a case it is. However, there is no case. There is zero evidence for a lunar calendar being applied to Scripture, especially regarding the day, which always begins at sunrise, never at sunset. We hope this recap, and this is a recap, not proof, clarifies this for everyone. Watch those other videos for full support. Yah bless my friends.
The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar named by the temple priests in Qumran as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilee is also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full test for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated as these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 Warm. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288 page quality paperback has a high resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook, or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org, and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.